Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another True You podcast with me, Paula Burns, wedding planner and creative business mentor. This is the place where we have open discussions to understand who you are in order that you can live your life to the fullest. And I love doing these podcasts because I get to meet people from all over the world, but also in the UK where I live as well. And these are people who are living their true lives, whether they've been living it for a long time or whether they've come into that realization right now. But honestly, um, I just want to be able to share their stories with you so that, um, you know, if you're listening right now and thinking, oh, I really need to do something about my life, it's just not feeling right for me it feels like you know I should be doing something more then I want you to hear other people's stories and their journey and just realize that you can do it too you can do it too so I have another amazing guest with me this week and her name is Jennifer McKenzie Welcome, Jennifer. <laughs> Hello, Paula. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> I'm excited for our conversation. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'm so excited to have you on as well. So the people who are, can't see us, I mean, this has been videoed as well, Jennifer has the most amazing blue hair. <laughs> so she's looking absolutely stunning. <laughs> and um, so I'm just going to start off by asking you the question, um, what is it that you do? Okay, what is it that I do? So I'm one of these people that does all the things, yeah. right? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's that. all centered <laughs> around our own personal well being. And I am a mind body coach and I have a holistic and somatic approach to healing the wounds that are deep inside of us that are held in our body that we carry around and they stop us living life to the full. Um, and my company is called Lunar Spirit Wellbeing, where I have a studio in Bedfordshire that I'm in now. <laughs> um, for those that can see this on the video, I'm in a beautiful studio where I do breath work, sound therapy, coaching um, in groups, and then my other part is as me, Jennifer McKenzie, I am a speaker, a radio host for the Wellbeing Show on Interbeats FM. And um, I also go into businesses and, and help people with their well-being. So I am really, really passionate about emotions, right? And the, the way that we treat and speak about mental health, um, so I come from a holistic approach to that. So uh, treating like the whole person. And I think it's really important to, to honor all of us, all of ourselves, mm. like, you know, in, in our messy humanness and also all of those emotions that we're taught to suppress. Yes. We're taught that anger's not okay and to stop being angry, stop crying and all this stuff, but actually crying is necessary and anger and all of those spectrum of emotions are normal they're necessary and to really sit into to feeling those understanding them releasing them so you can actually move forward in in your life and create more joy and happiness you know absolutely absolutely i mean have you found that um we're going to go a bit more into your story and your journey but you've you found that you know mental health at the moment is is a bit of a buzzword <laughs> um let's face it everybody talks about mental health we hear it all the time now in the media and it wasn't being spoke about before and um i feel like people are more aware of it but whether they're doing anything about it is another thing Mm. I, I mean, think the yeah. awareness is there yeah so how I feel about the mental health system is that it's it's broken it's outdated mm -hmm. yeah. I mean we've got all these wonderful people online um we've got you know from all walks of life we've got celebrities sharing their vulnerability with their mental health we've got people speaking up here there and everywhere about it but I think in the system is what's lacking is the how. How yeah. do you do that? And um, with these long waiting lists, the you know these people are um, igniting the awareness about mental health. It's like okay, 
I realize that there's something not quite right with me. I'm not feeling, you know, great mm -hmm. about myself or my life and things yeah. are going wrong. Um, and then they're left, they're left yeah. in this limbo yeah. where they haven't got the resources to, to actually help people. And then the people that are getting left behind, the people kind of at the bottom that where they can't afford to go private, they can't afford mm -hmm. to, to actually go and, and get that help. So I feel there's, there's so much that can be done there from the top down yeah. um, with regards to, to helping people with mental health. But yeah, it's definitely um, much more spoken about nowadays than, than it was, where people were suffering in silence, you know? Exactly. Uh, mm. And it's like you said as well, it's like knowing that um, you might, you know you need help, but what is that first step? And then sometimes you take that first step and it doesn't really serve you. It is just not enough or it is just like, you know, it's lip service. So, um, you know, it's it's sort of, um, it's just watered down. So you feel like, oh, well, you know, does it really matter? Um, you know, my feelings and all of that. Yeah. But um, I want to ask you, what is it that you absolutely love about what you do? Oh, good. <laughs> right. I love witnessing the change and the transformation in the people mm. that I work with yeah. and, and receiving those messages from people that I don't even know are watching my page or, yeah. or consuming the content that I put out there. Um, and I had a message from somebody like saying, I've watched your page, I watch all of your stuff, I read all of your posts. Um, and I've never liked or commented or anything. So they're lurkers, <laughs> but they're getting the value, right? Yeah. Um, and he said, because of you, I, I'm still here. Yeah. Because of the content you put out. So yeah. I encourage people, like, share your story, as long as you feel comfortable doing that, of course. Like, you know, no, not everybody has to, but yeah. um, it really helps, like, other people. So mm. for me, it's sharing my own journey, um, and my own truth and like being not fluffing around, like, you know, pretending to be something that I'm not yeah. on social media and things. I think like being real, raw, vulnerable and, and, and honest, I think it yeah, absolutely. is where I come from. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to ask you, I want to take you right back because this is something I always do. Um, I, I, I feel like, um, you know, the way we grow up, what our childhood was like and and everything that we've gone through and our experiences are what brings us to the place that we are, which brings us to this place that we are living now. And so I want to ask you, what was your childhood like? So my childhood was, it was interesting. <laughs> you can't, right. I like okay. interesting stories. I yeah. love <laughs> um, I was really outgoing child, curious, like I loved nature, I loved being outside, I, you know, I wanted to know who, what, where, when, why of everything, mm -hmm. and um, I was quite full on, and when I got into the schooling system, it was difficult because I was told, sit down, shut up, you ask too many questions, and uh, my individuality that my mum encouraged me to to um, bring to the world, well, I was bullied for that at school. Mm -hmm. And so my world wasn't very safe then. And the outside world wasn't safe. So um, I ended up kind of withdrawing. Um, mm -hmm. My confidence got knocked because I was kind of ridiculed and teased and bullied at school. And, and I sort of became a shell of of who I was really, and um, I wasn't very happy. Like as I went into my teenage years, I was I was confused, and so I liked spending time by myself with animals, like a horse road as a kid. Um, but you know, some my childhood was really tainted mm. by um, an incident that happened to me when I was about nine, um, but with another boy. Um, where he sexually assaulted me um, without my consent, you know, but I didn't really do anything about it. I froze and that, like I carried that for so long. I carried that okay. um, for so long. And my teenage years were pretty troubled 
because I didn't, you know, I, I was a child, I didn't understand, like, so I didn't make that connection until a lot later in my life that childhood trauma was actually um, the driving force behind a lot of my decisions. And yeah. I started drinking at a very young age, 14, and taking drugs, having sex, um, and really taking a lot of risks that then added to my trauma. I was in, um, from 16, I was in a controlling violent relationship. Um, you know, he'd throw stones at me when I wanted to go and do things for my friends and stuff like that. So there's always been this, um, this control, this suppression and oppression of me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And throughout my childhood by the schooling system through then relationships that I got into and even by my parents because I was a lot you know and it was like oh you know what were the neighbors think and stuff like that so from a very young age I was shoved into a box and I was kind of felt so small yes mm -hmm. but then it felt like I mean from what you were saying you were trying to get out of this box, but in your own way, but at the same time, then you were being stuffed back into it. So yeah. the sort of frustration of that. Mm. And I loved the raves. I went to a lot of illegal raves and I got high and I was just by the speakers, just dancing and like in a field barefoot. And it was like, you know, it, it was my escapism yeah. um, and I loved it, you know, the, the hedonistic kind of like, ooh, escapism from, mm. and from me, from that, from that oppression. Um, and the drinking then, it, it got quite bad really. And I became a mum at 19. Uh, well, I was pregnant at 19, I gave birth at 20. So, yeah. you know, I, I did stuff like uh, from a young age and, and didn't really know who I was. Wow. Um, and I was just doing things that society kind of told me that I needed to do is like settle down, have kids. And um, yes. Yes. I yes. did actually run a business. Um, I had two pubs um, when I was 18 with my oh. partner. And, you know, nobody took me seriously, like, because I was so young. And so I went and did my licensee certificate and put my name above the door. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> hey, it's my you. pub. Get out yeah. of my pub. You know, like, thank you. Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will always be an iconic um, line on it. <laughs> I know. I, I did do that. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but but it sounded like you were a fighter you pushed your way through no mm. matter what you just kept pushing your way through yes you know were they the right ways were they the perfect ways no um in society in the eyes of society mm. but it's what you got you through you know it was my survival technique yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. what I created I created uh, this the, this armor, these walls around me, and it, everything felt like a fight, you know? Mm -hmm. It was um, fighting uh, to be seen and heard, fighting at, at school, like fighting to um, make my way in a man's world, you know, in, yeah. in business, at a very a young, ambitious girl. And it, it, it so everything felt like a fight. Um, and I started self-harming when I was about 14 as well, you know, because it was like, the world I felt like the world didn't accept me mm. it was like well I, I just want to be me and I feel really like misunderstood and stuff and I was like well what's wrong with me I'm awful I'm this you know and I really adopted that belief that I was I was shit and I wasn't I wasn't worth anything there is there's a real problem problem with acceptance in the world isn't there mm. if you are different it's hard to be accepted as being different. And I'm not talking about, you know, obviously the way out things or, you know, the things that sometimes we do because we're acting out and we just need that space. I'm talking about just being your true self. Like, you know, we're talking in the context of, of you know, this podcast. And when you know that you're a little bit different, that you maybe think differently, that you act differently, you have um, you have different talents because we all have our own individual talents and, you know, strengths and everything. And 
it, we can get picked on for that. It's like you said, you know, you're picked on for the fact that you're different from the norm. Yeah. Because being different from the norm means that you stick out, you know? Mm -hmm. And who says that the norm is the mundane? You know, who says that you have to be mundane to be normal? And, exactly. and that, you know, that that is my, my thing all the time. It's like, you don't have to just be, oh, you know, is that too much? You know, try and make yourself small all the time mm -hmm. just so that you can fit in. Oh, because you can just be normal like everybody. It's like you said, that really, you know, that is something that is told to a lot of people, you know, when you're going to settle down. And I remember um, somebody saying that to me. I, I was probably in sort of like my mid 20s, late 20s. Um, and I'd been in a band because I joined a band when I was in my early 20s and absolutely loved it. We were in the band for 10 years, you know, and that was a long time for a band to be together. But um, and I just, you know, embraced all my creativity then. It was scary because. You know, I grew up hearing you talking about growing up, you know, being, you know, spending a lot of time in your own company. And I did that because I was very quiet. I was just a very nervous child. And so I spent a lot of time in my own company, but I read books and stories and everything that I just created. So my imagination was huge. Mm -hmm. So it made sense that I did something that was creative because, yeah. you know, I can look at, I love, you know, I'm the sort of person I look at a blank sheet of paper and, and create crazy yeah. stuff <laughs> you yeah. know sort of like and that's why when I work with my clients now as a creative business mentor it's like tell me what mm -hmm. life like is for you and they can give me a bland picture and I can go well hang on <laughs> mm -hmm. talk about this this and this and this and you know this is what you can do to promote it and this is how you could have you thought about this and not really just telling them what to do but have you thought about this and I can remember going back to the, you know, talking about, you know, that whole time in my 20s, um, I was just having a ball. I absolutely loved that feeling, the great time of meeting new people when we were going out with the band and the laughs we had and, you know, just being able to use my talent, which was singing and music, which I absolutely mm -hmm. love. Um, and somebody said to me, I was just explaining, expressing you know the great time I'd had probably the weekend before or whatever and she just looked at me and said oh so when are you going to settle down oh <laughs> yeah. yeah that's how I felt you know oh. the, the face that you made and that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes thought, what is this thing about settling down I don't even think she realizes that what she said at that time but that stayed yeah. with me that that thing of like settling down I don't yeah. want to settle down <laughs> yeah why do we have to grow up down. <laughs> I'll grow up and settle down like it's a trap <laughs> <Don't do> it. <laughs> you can still live a life and still have a life that's exciting for you um, but it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else that's exactly. the thing and like I think we we are put in these boxes by society by um adverts by television programs by social media we're like constantly bombarded with how we should dress what mm. we should wear, um who we should be hanging around with what we yeah. should be doing how we should even heal right mm. you know it's it's this constant you should be doing this and yeah. actually find ways that you can live life your way not mm. someone else's ideal of yeah. how you should think feel and look you know yeah exactly how did you get into so obviously you you spoke a little bit about your journey growing up and the things that you did so mm. how did you get to this role that you're doing now um so, how did you start yeah. your business so my life um I when I had my first daughter when mm. I was 20 um 41 this year mm. and this month actually July and so I I had this love of the mind body mind and the body anyway um so I went to join college because we'd left the pubs and everything like that and I wanted to go and learn anatomy and physiology and I wanted to go and learn reflexology and it's there where I met my first Reiki master teacher um mm. at college so I spent a year in college met my first Reiki master teacher and I did my Reiki one and two so I had these qualifications and I started um 20 years ago now um, my training and my my love of of what I do now, which has evolved loads, but yeah. um, so that's, that's where I started. I started out as 
a holistic therapist and I started out as a, a Reiki practitioner. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had various other jobs in between that and sort of done that on the side. Um, my life was <clears throat> always kind of, I don't want to say tarnished, but alcohol played a massive part. Alcohol and drugs played a massive part in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I had these ups and downs of um, success, achievements, doing really well. And then I also had these lows of um, wanting to escape. Um, and if something would happen in my life, I that's the first thing that I did was turn to drink. I loved a party. So I was a party girl and I spent some time doing modeling and promotions as well. So I was kind of living this like party life, working a bit in London and working like a bit in Milton Keynes here and there doing different shoots um and and projects for different companies with their promotions and um i split up from my um two my oldest two daughters dad um and i really hit the drink card after that and i i thought i'd be with him forever and i broke it up but you know you go through that grieving process yeah. of trying to do it be empowered right you're trying to do the right thing for yourself because your respect's not being served so you're like i'm not doing this no more but nobody talks about that grieving process right mm. that of, of letting that go um and my life started to unravel like really badly i hit the drink hard i hit the drugs hard um i got in a situation where my face was um bashed open by a guy um my I had 25 stitches in my face like my tooth come out and all this stuff and my that was the end of my modeling because i i couldn't do those contracts that I'd been signed up to do because of um, the my face, <laughs> you know, they didn't want me to represent boots with this and um, these these stitches and scars on my face. So um, that was the end of that, and I was really mad. I was angry, you know, um, and I I lost my job because of my drinking. I spiraled into this dark hole, and uh, the kids went to live with their dad. Um, I lost the house. I actually became homeless um, mm. and I was in a really bad place, like addicted to drugs, smoking crack in derelict houses with strangers, like sleep sofa surfing. I did, you know, it, I hit a huge yeah. rock bottom from, yeah. you know, somebody that was sort of successful and loving life, you know, and kind of had still had this kind of self-worth and addiction thing, but you know it it really took hold of me um yeah. And I, yeah and it was it was scary like really scary um and then I found out I was pregnant again like with my my third child and it was like ah suddenly it wasn't like about me and my body it was about um yeah you know about the, the unborn baby that was in me and I I got help and I sorted myself out and and I got a place to live um you know I went into temporary accommodation I started again really and I started with the mattress on the floor um I had my baby I bathed her in the sink some days like we had you know nothing but we had a roof over our head you know and I moved to a house and I just slowly started to rebuild my life Mm -hmm. and I still had this this love of of holistic and spirituality and it was like before it was like I had this double life so I would have like do yoga and have green smoothies in the morning and then at night I'd be sniffing cocaine and you know having loads of sex and partying <laughs> and drinking loads and it that, is that, is that is the thing where you haven't healed issues so mm-hmm. the issues hasn't been healed you know where you wanted to be mm-hmm. but you hadn't addressed the issues and healed from that. Yes. So it kept creeping into uh-huh. the, the the real you and the 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 sort of like, you know, and I wouldn't say maybe the new you, but the 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 you that knew that this is who I want to be mm. and the you that was still dealing with all these issues that you had that, you know, from the past and you you were hadn't dealt with them. Yeah, exactly. And it was play uh, you know, it was you know not now i know like through yeah. the work I do, that it's this to the childhood trauma this is yeah. this that's that's locked deep inside it, yeah you know, that i didn't really 
I just pushed aside. Mm. I knew about it, but I wasn't addressing it. So I, um, I started to get myself sorted, but I was still going round in this cycle, round in this cycle, oh, right? Yeah. And I got to the point, Paula, where I didn't want to be here. I was like, I cannot keep doing this. I'd had counselling, I'd gone into recovery. You know, I just couldn't escape this this cycle. And I, I tried to take my life. I was at home and I was just like, I, I feel like everyone's better off without me. And honestly, I was just calm and I was like, I just want to go. And I um, cut my wrists and I, um, luckily my friend um, kind of knew something was wrong intuitively and they kicked down the door uh along with my dad um and her brother-in-law and they called an ambulance and i was unconscious and i woke up in hospital um and they said that it say that i was saved but i was angry i didn't want to be here i was angry that i was saved um and they actually sectioned me because i wanted to go home and take tablets and finish myself off so i got taken against my wheel and and put into a mental hospital in 2015 yeah. and i had this something happened in there right yeah. okay i went out to get some food i came back in and this white feather was sitting on top of one of my books and i was like where has that come from it can't it can't get in there's no windows there's, there's no, everything's plastic there's no feathers in there Right. And oh. yeah, and I dropped to my knees, right? I dropped and something moved in me, right? If we, when I tell this story, people are like, what? And it's like, literally, if, if anyone's had like oh, no, a, a I divine absolutely intervention. I absolutely believe it. Yeah. And it was like a jolt. And I, I broke open and I, I started sobbing, like and wailing. And I had, I and I hadn't cried for a long time. I'd gone like this. I'd kept it all in. Like I was strong. I was this like strong woman. You can't get to me. But um, I just broke open, mm. and I looked in the mirror, and I didn't even recognise myself. I was like, "Who am I? Who even am I?" Mm. And I and and I looked in the mirror, and I promised myself I wouldn't give up anymore. Um, I had four children that needed their mom um and a family that loved me or desperately trying to help me that were hurting too yeah. but i also realized then it's actually i didn't i didn't want to die i wanted to want things to change and i made those changes uh and i when i came home i was like look i want to get back to my spirituality i want to get back to this and i i had you know a, a heart full of dreams, a head full of limitations, but I had an old massage bed in my cupboard, uh, about three fifty in the bank, three pound fifty, <laughs> right? Um, and I was like, right, I need to feed myself. I need to feed my kids, and I started my business from my lounge, um, and I've not looked step. back. The first step. Yeah, the first step. I wear, oh, I always say. It's more mm. the first step, even if it's just tiny, it's small. It's like you said, you had three pound fifty, you had a bed, you had a massage bed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What have you got? You know, <laughs> what have you got that yeah. you can start and take that first step? Yeah. We don't exactly. want one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's your head telling you that you can't. You mm. can't do this. I haven't got enough of this. I haven't got enough knowledge. I haven't got enough time. Like, yeah, we we do. Mm. It's about changing your mindset and actually saying being resourceful right it, and again that's another survival technique that I had like uh, my ability to survive is clearly there yeah, <laughs> you know absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, I and I never looked back you know I, I know mm. I've just built on that I've built on my business I've built on my skill set my mindset and and I learned what trauma was um mm. I trained in trauma um, I learned what my own trauma was, and I began to slowly peel off the armor, the masks that I was wearing, and and began to heal. And you know, oh, however many years on, it, it's still a process. You know, it's yeah. still a process. Yes, yeah. it's an ongoing process. You've mm. had quite a journey. 
But it's an amazing <laughs> one. It's an amazing journey. It's a journey of, you yeah. know, self-discovery. Mm. And it's exactly. a journey of, yeah, exactly. And it's a journey of um, being touched by something bigger than you, someone bigger than you. I have a really strong faith. So I grew up in the church, you know, with my family and my parents, you know, were preachers and all of that type of thing. But, you know, I grew up with that anyway. But, uh, you know, throughout my life, I've always had a strong faith. And when you mention that thing about feeling something shift inside you, you just know, you you know, you feel it. And you can't, you can't, um, you can't, explain it to anybody <laughs> what it is they have to feel it but you you just know you just yeah. know it's like that shift in in everything that you do and who you are um and and the next question I was going to ask is I always ask you know did you ever feel like you lost your way but you've said a lot of, a lot of examples here of how you lost your way <laughs> I I was yeah but I was a lost little girl yeah. And an inner child healing has been the real catalyst for, for me stepping into my own power. Like mm. I went and got little Jen and I held her hand and I brought her home. I dealt with a, a lot of stuff to do with, um, you know, there's, there's so much more to my journey. Like we'll be here all day, <laughs> you know, so many <laughs> know. layers of trauma and things that have happened to me that yeah. I had to unpick. Um, and sometimes I still have to revisit them and unpick them a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, when you started your business, when you sort of like came to that realization, oh, I've got a massage bed, so I'm gonna start a business. What was that like for the people around you? Because, you know, one of the things I say is like, you know, when you make a decision to do something, you have got those voices outside. You know, you've got the voices in your own head to deal with, but you've also got the voices with everyone around you going, oh, are you sure? <laughs> you know, what do you mean you're setting up a business? You know, maybe you're better off just getting a job and getting some money and whatever. You know, did you ever feel like it? that was a scary experience? You know, like not scary physically, but scary like mentally. Um, should you maybe be doing something else rather than that? No, because I'd run businesses before. Right. So this weren't my first rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd um, run my own salon. Um, before so a beauty and holistic salon that I had as well um, and then I'd run the pubs so it wasn't it it wasn't really like my first time running or starting a business business right okay mm. yeah Good. but and so people around you are very supportive um yeah because my dad's quite entrepreneurial as well so yeah. like yeah like it, it um I suppose they did have those niggling thoughts of oh what if it doesn't work uh, mm -hmm. and things like that but I I had to overcome them they still crop up sometimes it's like you know when we, you know when we go to the next level of growth like in our yeah. business like okay here we go here's yeah. here's that little imposter going yeah is it really oh, gonna work me. is it really gonna be like you know will people really pay for this <laughs> am yeah. I being as good as I think I am I mean we all still you know, go through that, yeah. um, you know, and, and so there's a conflict sometimes between that thing of self-belief and mm. also, you know, um, oh, am I good enough? Yeah. Um, so um, do, what, do I need to sort of like do more to train myself more? Do I need to do more courses? Do I need to do this? Do I need to be more convincing? Do I need to just offer more? You know, will people just yeah. feel like, you know, this isn't enough for what I'm charging? And all these questions all yeah these questions. yeah I think they're ongoing questions aren't they when yeah. when you're looking at business analysis and stuff when it's mm -hmm. like okay what's working what's not you know are my offers tweaked to my ideal client and that it, it's like what you know what's working what isn't what can I what can I do to create more or oh, yeah. yes yes it's yeah, all right that, yeah. that is the big thing that you know I work with my clients on you know is uh -huh. what, what what do they do to um, get seen more and um, get connections, you know, because I am all about connections, which is why, you know, this podcast is called The True You, because yeah. when you are yourself um, mm. and you are going out in that space of, you know, 
accepting who you are, but also showing and sharing your passion, mm. your people will be drawn to you. Your people yeah. will be drawn to you. It's just, it, it's, you know, it's a known fact. It, it's just going to happen. It's natural. So um, I discovered like really like addiction is disconnection. Like, um, so oh, yeah. when we are disconnected from our body we're disconnected mm. from our our true selves yeah you know, that's that's when we encounter these things like um like addictions and things like that so yeah. i was walking around disconnected yeah i was totally disconnected uh, uh, from me i was disconnected from my body because you know that was my body the trauma responses in my body telling me that i wasn't safe so i was all up in my head so what i do is like get out get people out of their heads into their yeah. bodies into the body all, yeah. all somatic it works yeah. i do and yeah. soma means um body in latin so it's all about uh connecting to the breath connecting mm -hmm. to ourselves on a, a much deeper energetic level yeah. it's like mm -hmm. for, for me i talk about heart and soul as well mm -hmm. you know so we are more than just us the physical state we are more than that you know we have something deeper that just you know, if you listen to that inner voice and that inner space, you know, so take, as you say, you know, with that disconnection, if you're not connected with who you, you know, that inner voice and that soul and that spirit and that mm -hmm. heart, it, it, that's why all these other things take us over because mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it's yeah. not part of who we are as individuals. That's um, why I call my podcast that inner voice. Because it's like, say that again? That's why my podcast is called That Inner Voice. Oh, I love it's, it. Yeah. It's like, you know, what is your inner guidance system saying to you? Yeah. Do you trust that inner guidance system? And also the, the podcast is about actually saying the things that we really want to say <laughs> without like, you know, holding back. Yeah, yeah. I love a conversation with you. <laughs> Oh, having so much insight. <laughs> I know. Out. And I love the fact that you're like, yeah, let's get into our heart and our soul. Yes. And, you know, oh, really God. Embody, Absolutely. Absolutely. embody who we are. Yeah. And that creativity comes from our our sacral area. Yes. Um yes. as well. So it's like it, if we're blocked in that in that area then our creativity is not going to be flowing. Like creativity is like the source of, of life, really. Like when I was little, I used to write. So I used to write poems. I used to write songs and things like that. And then it's my healing journey. I've come full circle, I feel. I've come back to, to who I really am and who I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing in this world with, with speaking, with writing um we do somatic dance and that in here so music is a massive part of my life being a radio dj as well like i just now all the things that i loved when i was little nature dancing music um and writing i bring them all together now Love it. without the drink of the drugs yeah you know, yeah. without that that clouding that uh, so i call it like eyes wide open without the haze you know, that's mm -hmm. why I, how I um, talk about my sobriety. Yeah. Is like, I think living eyes wide open without the haze, without like Remember the simple things about what you were about. And, yeah. that's, and that's why I have that conversation about childhood. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when I ask um, my, even my clients, sometimes, you know, I have that conversation with them. What is it that they absolutely love? And they have to stop and think about it because they've forgotten what they love. Mm. You know, what is the things that lights them up? And, and I That's really cool. get to them to dig deep and start remembering, this is what I love. You know, you talked about the dance and the nature and the creativity and all of these things. You know, and the moment I started sort of doing this, what I do in terms of the creative mentoring, it just feels so right for me. Mm -hmm. It just feels so right. You know, it started off with events and weddings and that's all creativity yeah. because, you know, I come up with creative ideas and, you know, help people create that day. And I love bringing people together and all that happiness and everything. But I also love this side of my business where I'm just helping people to mm -hmm. come back to that space of who they are and yeah. really shine with their heartfelt business. Because let's face it, the people that I work with are people who have a business that is 
a heartfelt business, a business that they know they are meant to do, but they're just not getting out there. They're yeah. just not shining the way they should be. They're not yeah. drawing the people to them. And yeah. I'm taking them that through that process. And I absolutely I love, love it. Love seeing them open mm-hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, I can see it on your face and in your energy field that, <laughs> that you're really connected with what you do and like the passion behind that. Yeah, I can see that. Read, I, I was like, read energy. Like I work oh. with people's energy. So like, <laughs> I can see that like coming from from your heart space there. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I've got some quick fire questions to finish off the podcast. Okay, so let's go. Um, Do you understand what makes you truly happy? Yes. Yes. Simple. It's simple. Like (laughs) just showing up and being excited about life. Like, you know, what what do I get to do today? Mm. Yeah, I love that. Um, how are you, and, and I feel like you are, you are now, in, especially in what you do, but how are you with getting still to feel emotion? So, you know, to having that space and that time to actually feel that inner voice. Oh, I, gosh, I do that every day. Like I sit with myself, mm. you know, it, yeah, I sit with myself. I allow my emotions to flow um, and I do breath work for emotional release. I teach breath work for emotional release. And that is, um, and at the end of the sessions, we do a primal scream. So yeah. it's like it's sacred rage. It's like, oh, it's releasing all of that from your body. And it it's beautiful. So yeah, that's one of my daily practices. Have you found your tribe? Yes. Well, I created it because I I talk about this when I'm, I do my speech, um, Becoming a Warrior Woman. Mm-hmm. And it was, I because I, I was masking to fit in, I wasn't in my tribe. Yeah. So when I, I took off on my mask and had my like awakening, I created my own tribe. Yeah. Of, of amazing people, like then not just women, but like amazing conscious people who, who nobody gets left behind or is mm-hmm. higher or lower or whatever. We're all in a circle and yeah. we're, we're all connected. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a tribe is something that's ongoing, isn't it? You More people are added to your tribe all the time because, as I said, people get drawn to you. You're just draw, People are drawn to you when you're in your right space and your right place. Yes, so, exactly. When you're showing up like yeah. as your true self, yeah. that's when the right people are drawn to you. But when we're putting on all these masks and yeah. these pretense because we're scared mm-hmm. of judgment and scared of... of actually being ourselves from yeah. fear um then we're we attract the people that aren't aligned to us because it's false exactly false exactly i mean you know and it's back to that thing where we feel like oh that's too much you know maybe we shouldn't be like this and you know one of my clients said this you know i have a a group um called business wallflower to spotlight sensation which i oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Um, it's fairly new and like the, the members in the group I just love it I love the energy they're so excited you know they're going through the, the process and everything and you know one of them said um, she had like a little description about what she would say about her business and um, and she put it you know in the group and she shared it with us and and then she said oh do you think that's too much and I was like it's absolutely too much that's why you need to use it <laughs> Yes. So why do we tell ourselves that we shouldn't be too much <laughs> no I love to, to <laughs> I love to dance about like on yeah. my Instagram sometimes I'm just in my pants yeah. like <laughs> in the garden <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'm just like yeah I'm just gonna roll with that. oh <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly do you love yourself unconditionally I do um, but that's still a work in progress. Yeah. Some days I catch myself and I'm like, uh, damn girl, we need to get that sorted. And yeah, <laughs> and I can bring myself back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It is an ongoing thing. Again, yeah. you know, building your tribe, loving yourself is an ongoing process. But, acceptance. You know, yeah, exactly. I accept who I am, where I've been, yes. and where I've come from and yeah. and all the things that have happened to me for me however you want to look at mm. it have shaped me into the woman I am today and I'm Absolutely. proud of that person I'm 
I'm proud Absolutely. of that. Mm. Yeah. Jennifer, it's been amazing chatting to you. I've loved our conversation. Mm. And I hope that everyone who's been listening has loved this conversation too. And you, um, you know, if you are listening, you're going to take something away from this that'll help you, um, you know, just, just move forward in your life. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we all have one life. And we all have, I say, we all have a space that needs to be filled and only we can fill that space. And if you don't fill your space, it's just going to be empty. And there's going to be people who are going to be needing what you offer, walking past that space and thinking, there's nothing there. It's void. You're not there. And honestly, um, you know, so um, it's time for us to be more aware of who we are and why we're here. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for um, being on this podcast. And to everyone else who is listening, I will be back next week with another amazing guest. But in the meantime, keep being the true you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>